Hi there, I'm Jim Herndon with Revit Answers, and today we're going to be talking about how to use phases with your Revit model. Okay, to get started, I've got this sample project here, and in this project, I've created a really simple four walled building, and I have tweaked some of the phase settings to kind of show you how to do this. So, some of the key points to keep in mind with phases is that every single object inside of Revit has phase settings. So when you select an object like this wall and you go over to the properties, let's scroll down, and then here at the bottom we have this little section here called phasing. This is where you're going to change the phase properties of any object. And this is uh, where you change actually graphically how it's going to look. Now those graphic settings we'll get into a little bit later, but the important thing is that you are telling every object exactly when it gets created in time, when it gets demolished, if at all in time, uh, what phase you know it gets added into the project or taken out, etc. So you do that here with phase created. So this wall here is set to existing and phase demolished I have set to none. It's important to know that each view also has its own phase settings. So if I select nothing here, then the default properties here in our properties palette are for the view. And you can see here that if I scroll down here, down at the bottom, I also have phasing. And for this view, I have two slightly different settings here. Uh, the first one is the phase for the view. Now, if you were to think of this kind of like um, a time travel movie, uh, like take Back to the Future, for instance, you have different points in time, like 1955, 1985, and like 2015 or whatever. This phase down here, this phase setting, is like telling Revit where you're at in time for this particular view. So existing, if we set this view to existing, then we are at that point in time. That's where we exist in this view of our model. So you can see that these walls that were created during the existing phase, they look new. They look like new construction. That's because relative to this point in time, they are. And let's go ahead and look at those view settings again for the, the phase settings for the view. This other setting here, this phase filter, is where we're tweaking how we are seeing things at this point in time. So if you were to go back in time to 1955 and ask somebody, hey, what's the present date? They're going to say 1955. If you travel to 1985 and say, hey, what's the present date? They're going to say 1985. They're both right relative to where they're at. And that's how this phase filter works. This phase filter is relative to where you're at in time. So we are in the existing phase relative to time. And what we're going to see here is relative to where we are. So show previous plus new. There is no, there are no phases prior to existing. So you're not seeing anything from that previous phase. And new relative to the existing phase are these walls. Relative to where we're at in time, these are new walls. So if we were to change this to say show complete, nothing really happened because relative to this point in time this project is complete. This is what it looks like at the complete stage. If we change it to say show demo plus new, nothing happened because there is nothing in a previous phase that's getting demoed relative to where we're at now. And it, everything new is you know these walls relative to these phases. So the terms that come with Revit and whether you knew it or not you were actually already working with phases because Revit has to have a couple of phases and the default ones are I'll show you here in the phase settings for the view, are existing and new construction. Those can be a little bit misleading because existing is just what Revit decided to call that first phase. And they're calling the second phase new construction. You could just as easily call this phase one, and you could call this new, new construction phase phase two. And on some projects, we actually do that, if there, especially if there isn't any existing construction. If it's a remodel or an addition, then yeah, you'll probably want to call your very first phase in your project existing, and you want to model things and put them on the existing phase, and then everything after that you'll call either new construction or phase one or phase two, and you can tweak all these settings. And here I'm going to show you how to do that. But before we get into that, let me show you some of the other views that I've set up in this sample project. So in the sample project I have a regular floor plan, I have an existing floor plan, this is just what I've titled it, and I have this working floor plan. Now in the existing one, that's the one we're looking at, the phase is set to existing, and the phase filter 
is I can set it to almost any of these, but I have it set to show previous plus new because I want to see what the project looked like relative to the existing construction. So when we first showed up at the job site, you know, this is what it looked like. Now this other view, my regular floor plan, this is where I have defined the phase as new construction and I've changed the filter to show previous plus new. So relative to the new construction phase, these walls here, these walls here are previously created and then these walls are newly constructed in the new construction phase. So now they're being shown with the dark lines and these existing walls are being shown with a lighter gray line and that's because they were created in that previous phase. So let's jump over here to this working view that I created. In this working view, I have set the phase filter to show wall and I've set the phase to new construction. So this is kind of handy to have a working view where you have all of your phases being shown because then you can really see what's actually happening in your whole project. So you can, I can see all my walls that are being demoed here, like this chunk I'm cutting out. I can see the new walls that I'm constructing and I can see the old previously uh, created walls. In this little demo house, we're adding a little addition, knocking out a chunk of wall, and we're adding a vestibule, and we're knocking out a chunk of wall to create this door. Which brings us to the next point I want to cover, and that is that once you know what your phases are and you've set them up, and you kind of need to go into your project knowing what your phases are, you can retroactively, you know, set up your phases. It's a little bit more difficult, but you know, it's good to have a good idea of what's going to happen in your project before you get going because what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to actually break things up relative to when they're going to get demoed or when they're going to get added. So jumping back over to our existing floor plan, it looks like just four walls, but you can see when I hover over these walls here that just this chunk highlights, just that chunk highlights, just that chunk highlights, because I need to break my wall up at this point in time so that later on I can tell this chunk that it's staying see here in the properties for it, it doesn't get demoed. And this one here, also created in the existing phase, is gonna get demolished in the new construction. So if you have to cut out a chunk of slab or a chunk of wall, you actually need to take that wall and you need to break it up into individual parts and components. You can't demo out just sections without making those sections a se separate part in Revit that you can change the phase settings of. So graphically, this looks like one single wall, and for all intents and purposes, it is. But relative to Revit here, it's actually three wall chunks. And this middle one, I'm changing the phase settings to get demoed in the new construction phase. And then that triggers Revit to, if I'm showing the demo phase to show it dashed like this, in this view, I'm not showing the demo phase, so it doesn't even show up at all. And it's telling Revit that this section here that's going to remain existing but is previously created is going to show up with gray lines. And that brings us into the next topic we need to cover relative to phases. Up here on the manage tab you have your phases button right here. And this is where you set up your phases, this is where you name your phases, and this is where you set up your phase filters and where you tweak your graphic overrides. Now by default the graphic overrides with Revit are pretty decent and I recommend getting a good handle on how phases work before you get in here and start tweaking them. But basically if you don't like the way Revit is showing things that are either demolished or are existing, created in a previous phase, this is where you, you tweak the settings to change that. Now if a wall is being constructed in this phase, let me go ahead and cancel out of this. If it's being constructed in this phase, it's going to, of course, inherit the properties that you have set up relative to visibility graphics. I've hit VG on the keyboard. It's going to be based on my wall settings here. But if the wall was created in a previous phase or demoed, that's where the graphics that we set up in our visibility uh, graphics um, is getting overridden by our phase settings. So these graphic overrides only come into play if a wall is set to be demolished or set to be existing from a previous phase. And then the line work is getting controlled by what you set up here. So this is where you tweak that if you want to change those things. Your phase filters, now you can name, you can set up as many of these as you want, you can name them whatever you want, but I would kind of stick with those for now until you uh, maybe want to set up your own custom ones, but they are just named 
to try and help you understand what's going on. So the show previous plus demo, show previous plus new, it's a little bit confusing, but keep in mind that it's relative to the phase that you're in. So all of these new, existing, demolished, temporary, these names here, these are relative to where you're at in time. A little confusing, but once you play around with it, it makes a little bit more sense. Just keep in mind what we talked about earlier, that you set your point in time where you're at, and then your phase filter is purely based on where you're at in time. Let me cancel out of this. So another thing to keep in mind is that if you're working with consultants and you have linked files, like I have this linked structural model, it's important that your consultants also pay attention to what phase they're putting their objects on. So you can see here that these structural columns appear differently. This one appears differently than this one up here. That's because these ones, if I tab select it through the link, you can see it was created in a previous phase, and I even named that phase something different in the structural model. I called it stuff that was there, just to kind of prove that you don't have to call uh, your phases identical names across links. Uh, in the architectural model, we call it existing. In the structural model, I called it stuff that was there. The important thing to keep in mind is that Revit's going to look at your linked files, and if your first phase in your architectural project is existing, it's going to just find the first phase in the structural model, and it's going to pick that one and line those two up. So it's just going to line them up based on the first ones it comes across. So if I have an existing phase as my first phase, and they have stuff that was there as their first phase, that's what they're going to line up. You can tweak that and you can change that on a view-by-view -view basis if you really want to dig in deep. If I were to go into the visibility graphics here for this view and I go to the Revit Links tab and I go into the display settings for uh, the structural model and I change it to custom, I can actually come in here and I can change how, uh, how that structural model looks. I can change the way we're seeing it in time. So it's, it's a little bit weird, but think of it this way. You could be back in 1955 and you could have this LinkedIn structural model, but you could you could tell Revit, I want to see everything inside that structural model relative to 1985. You're kind of looking across time through your links that way, and so it can get it can get a little bit complicated. I recommend just kind of going with the default settings by host view, but if you really need to get in there and change them, I can change the phase to any phase in the structural model that I want. And in the structural model, I have a stuff that was there, a new stuff, and a phase two. Let's change it to the default was new stuff. Let's change it to stuff that was there relative to this view. And you can see that now the structural model, the columns that were already there are now the ones that are darker. And the ones that are in the future, uh, they aren't even showing up in this view. So you can get in there and you can really tweak and fine tune uh, how your project looks with your phases. But for the most part, keep in mind that you want to set up the different phases in your project, and then you want to give each object a phase setting, and then you want to give each view a phase setting, and then you set the phase filter, and that phase filter is purely relative to the phase setting of the view. So wherever you're at in time, it's relative to that. And then when you link in projects, if you have to link in projects, you your phases are going to line up the first ones at a time, but you can tweak that, you can change the way that looks. And finally, if you have to demolish out or add in little chunks and pieces, you have to actually break those objects into those pieces that are going to get broken up. All right, so that's about it for Revit phases. I hope you learned something and got something good out of it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, I recommend that you stop by RevitAnswers.com and maybe sign up for the mailing list so you can get updated when new videos come out. Thanks, we'll see you next time.